Okay, we're on a Windows 7 system here. Uh, we're going to pull some hashes off it using Knable and PW Dump. Then we're going to try and crack a few. We'll then use uh, Rainbow Tables uh, as well as John the Ripper, Hashcat, and uh, maybe another one. So let's start with Kane and Able. We head over to this crack it, Cracker tab. And we're just going to pull the hashes off this system by going uh, right clicking. Push add to list, import hashes from local system. Push next, and there it loads um, a couple of hashes we're interested in. Notice first of all the Georgian account. There's no land manager password. Um, there is an NTLM, and it's the same with test and test one. So if we want to load a land manager hash, which you can likely only find on Windows 2003 or Windows XP. We'll import hashes for a text file in this case. And there's an account called victim that has land manager hash. But we're going to start by trying to crack a test by a quick brute force. And this will be very quick. Uh, so we've got a predefined area of lowercase letters and numbers. This could be the password length change it up if we wanted to, make a smaller key space, but in this case it will be very quick, you just push start and it instantly finds the password because it was the same as the username. When we go to do Georgian though on the other hand, uh, if we do a brute force and go down to 10 characters, because I do know it's 10 characters, and it is uh, only uh, letters and numbers, in lowercase in this case, so the key space is pretty big, we push start. This is going to take some time, especially running on a virtual machine. So we're not going to do that. We're going to stop it, and we're going to try uh, doing a dictionary attack. So we have a list, pre-made list, very short one in this case. And I'm going to reset it. So it's going to use a dictionary list to try and break it and it finds it fairly quickly. Oh, it's actually password, okay. Not password 01, that's fine. So we found it fairly quickly with a dictionary. Now, uh, the one we haven't found here, a victim, if we tried to do use the land manager, so we'll brute force using land manager Notice uh, we only need this predefined area. Don't even need to add lowercase letters, and we can keep it at uh, 1 to 7 here. That's assuming it is lowercase or uppercase letters and numbers. Uh, so if we push start, it did find part of the password, and the rest will take us a little over two hours, which isn't too bad. Um, and of course, we could speed this up on a more powerful uh, computer. But we're going to stop this, and we're going to use. Uh, we we'll use rainbow tables in a few minute in a, in a minute to actually uh, crack it much more quickly, uh, a few seconds rather than hours. And before we do that, though, I'm just going to show you one other way that we can pull hashes off a system using PW dump. So there's a few different uh, arguments for it. We'll simply do this: localhost, and there you go. We pulled hashes off this system and we can copy and paste them or we could send it to a file if we like. So let's go try uh, rainbow tables now. So we're on a different system running can enable again and we've got that same hash loaded LM. What we're going to do is we're going to use uh, rainbow tables. And right here you may not be able to see it but it says via rainbow tables rainbow crack. And I've already got a rainbow table set up. I've generated it myself uh, Although you could download this um, table online, you can generate your own. Uh, you can even pay for some fairly large tables to have them mailed to you on a DVD or a, a drive. And we'll see how long. Now, it was going to take two hours um, maximum to find this hash uh, running a brute force. So let's see how long it takes with rainbow tables.
And there it's done. That didn't take very long at all. The password in this case, password 01. So we're going to just jump over to uh, Backtrack here. And we're, um, we're going to try using John the Ripper. We're going to pull a hash off a Linux system in this case. In this case, uh, we're going to actually pull the hash off of Backtrack. We'll do uh, cat Etsy shadow. And we're going to look for the account Alice. And so there's her hash. And we'll just send that to a file, alice.hash. And then we're just going to run John against that file. It loaded the hash, no problem, and it is trying to brute force it now. So we're trying Alice, a bunch of things. I expect this will only take a few more seconds. And of course, John can do many other things. Uh, we can use dictionary lists and so on. So I'm just going to pause this and we'll come back when it finds the password. So there it is. Um, I paused it for about uh, another 10 seconds there. So this definitely didn't take uh, very long. Looks like it took well, it took about 30 seconds, maybe less. And the password was ABC123. And now let's move on to uh, another cool uh, hash cracker. In this case, it actually ends up, it uses the GPU. So it harnesses the power of your ATI or NVIDIA card. Uh, the next, uh, this one I think is using my uh, ATI card, actually. And uh, we'll just use the example that they have. It's pretty neat. <clears throat> So the command is actually up here. There's the executable. There's the hash, the type of hash. Um, the S and the D are, are your are char set, and the maximum, uh, so D for digits. And there it found it. Roger15 was the password. Another example using um, NTLM that they have. Oh, and the example in this case isn't going to work out. Um, there might be a bug in it. I don't know. I'll have to take a look later on. But for now, let's just go over to OCL Hashcat, which is not a cool one. So in this case, I've got my own example. I'll try um, take a look at it first. So we call Hashcat, the executable on a 64-bit system, dash M. Um, 1000, that actually stands for NTLM. Well, in this program, that's what it stands for. And we're going to use a brute force, so dash A3 is brute force. There's my file with the hash. And in this case, I'm actually going to try something kind of neat. If I assumed that the password started, or I knew that it started with password 0, and I just didn't know the last digit, I can replace it with the question mark D standing for digit, and it will try. Oh, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So this one, in this case, it'll find it very quickly, hopefully. And there it is. So it did find it fairly quickly. And if we wanted to go the long route, we could... Let's go back a little bit. I've got this here. Right here. So now it's actually running, and it's going to try quite a large uh, key space. And what's neat about this program, too, is that if you push S, it's actually going to tell me my, uh, my video card temperature, how fast my fan's moving. And it's going to continue uh, trying to find the password. And notice my temperature is going to go up, so I'm actually going to stop. But uh, this is another very powerful um, cracker that uses uh, your video card. Of course, you can go, always go online and throw in a hash into Google and see if uh, Google 
if someone's already cracked it, and Google will tell you so. Or perhaps you uh, end up using uh, Amazon's web services to uh, harness the power of multiple computers, crack even faster, which would be pretty cool. Uh, that's all for today.